Hi, everyone. Uh, how's the sound today? Tennessee Mike, DGB, Bruce, Forbin. How's everyone doing? Okay. Uh, sound okay? Hey, Funk Blog. Uh, Seth Morley, Tennessee. Hey, guys. Hi, Joseph. The sound okay. Thank you. Um, hey, Clyde. Your Pete Pimpin is right. Well, no, um, you have to understand. Oh, good. Sounds okay. Good. That's all I need. Uh, today is the last day uh, for for everyone to have their uh, entry into the Grand Prix picks. But also, uh, tomorrow, or actually Monday, is Labor Day. And you guys have put up with a lot of stuff with some weird hats and everything I wore, but I will not wear white after Labor Day. I would not insult this learned group of gentlemen by doing that. So I had to wear it someday. And so here's the last chance uh, that I have before Labor Day. Okay. Um, let's talk about... Uh, mechanical watches let me see who else just showed up clyde hey wim how you doing man uh ns something uh let's see jeffrey k how are you as as i said <laughs> how you doing man kaz uh how's everything down there i it sound it's looking like it's gonna hit north of miami and uh maybe miss the whole thing all together that would be great wouldn't it uh, for the uh, hurricane, I had offered my uh, services uh, to take care of the hurricane victims' uh, watches. So anyway, that makes me a real uh, philanthropist. All right, uh, let's see, everybody here. Okay, let's talk about um, wind-up watches today. I'm going to set this one. I've been uh, running around like mad. Uh, so let me get my watch all set. It's uh, 332, 312, there we go. And um, the watch I'm going to be wearing today is my uh, Langenhain um, Frederick II. I found out something. Um, Adam, who also, I think it's Adam, who has one, he has a Frederick III. And the difference, among other things, besides the, the uh, Frederick III having Roman numerals, uh, they also have um, a little sort of a circular graining or a circular, uh, what do you call that you know, circular like guilloche that you have on watches? And then a lot of times they put them in the uh, uh, sub seconds on my um, FP Journe. They have it both, I think, on the uh, sub seconds and the um, power reserve indicator. Now, this one doesn't have it. And instead, there's a sort of an indent and then it's smooth underneath. I like them both. Okie doke. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Yeah, right. I'm a hero. <laughs> yeah, DG, wise guy. Okay. Um, just for that, I'm not taking your watches in. <laughs> all right. So let's, let's talk about, um, let's talk about the watches uh, one versus the other, the, uh, the, the automatics. Here's, I have uh, my Kalpa automatic. And the thing about this automatic, it's got that big hunk of gold for a rotor, which is sort of cool, but still things, uh, things get in the way of seeing what's there. Whereas this, not only does it have a great big uh, window that you can see everything, but also it has these uh, with tri a trigonal bridge for all of the, the gears, and so you can see all of the movement. Hey, Truth Spears, how you doing, man? Uh, Truth Spears is our, our, our um, resident poet, I'll put it that way. <laughs> uh, Alex, how are you, man? <laughs> so, we're, so let's talk about this. Okay, first of all, um, tell me what is your favorite mechanical watch that you actually have uh that you can that you look at the movement with any uh any favorites you have or uh or not 
Uh, by the way, too, uh, Maritz Grossmann just put out a, a watch. I think it was the prototype was last year, but they came out with their first automatic uh, that they had. They All of their other ones were um, hand wound and they their first automatic uh, they just came out with. And uh, if you look at it, it is called a hammock. And I think that's for the, instead of having a rotor, a uh, peripheral rotor or a micro rotor, they have this hammer that goes back and forth and you can see the whole movement. Really a good idea, I think. Okay, um, your chop heck. Oh uh, yeah, Kaz, that is, that is a good one. Parmigiani Fleurier Hebdo de Mari. You know, that is, uh, I think that's one of the best movements that uh, Parmigiani ever made. I love that watch. Uh, that's a very cool one. Uh, let's see, prefer, uh, yeah, well, DG, you got to go stand in the corner. Today we're talking about <laughs> mechanical. Some guy had said, well, you know, you got to watch out for the stem. <laughs> it's like, well, if you have a rotor, it's going around all the time. It's going to wear out <laughs> all the parts. Okay, uh, high five. Oh, air toad. Oh, you're talking air toad. Sorry, as I said, <laughs> where's air toad? Uh, there you do it. Hey, air toad, how's it going, man? Your humble nomos Orion 35. Yeah, that you know, that Orion 35 is a pretty cool watch. In fact, I, I don't think there's you know, nomos watches to me is, is sort of like a, a I, I've known people like that. They're they're not fancy. They're they're okay, but it, their attitude is either take it or leave it. I don't care, and I, I have that sense about Nomos. Nomos, I'm going to do my job. I could care less if you like it or not. Some of us do, some of us don't. But if you don't, too bad. And that's that's sort of my my view of Nomos. Nomos has got a sort of a very nonchalant attitude, sort of a ball house. You know, you either you either get it or you don't. Okay, what else you got going here? Uh, say, I only have one manual watch right now. Oh, yeah, the Endeavor. The Oh, my God, yes, that Endeavor. Let me tell you something. I was looking at, um, in fact, I, I almost grabbed my uh, uh, my uh, uh, Moser to wear instead of, instead of this one, but this one was right here, and my Moser is in the case. But the, the differences, I was really surprised, the different movements. Uh, between the uh, H. Moser, the Endeavor, the Pioneer, and the, um, what do they call it? One of the other ones that they have. Um, the Venture, that was it. But boy, that Endeavor movement is a sweet, sweet movement. Hey, Rich Buddy, how's it going, man? Hey, BS. Well, is Clyde being racist? Uh, I prefer watches from south of the border. Manuel wine watches. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't think it's racist, but it's a bad pun, you know. <laughs> okay, ETA sixty four ninety eight. Yes, uh, love those. I got a uh, those. I have here's my sixty four. Uh, this is my sixty four ninety eight clone, uh, which is um, uh, by Siegel. This is a very very cool movement. Even the clone of it is 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 good. And the accuracy that I'm getting out of it is phenomenal. It's another thing, too. Um, I like the two and a half hertz. Just about all of the uh, H. Mosers are two and a half hertz. All of the Caribou and Lanans, all of the um, Philippe Dufour, all of the uh, Roger Smith, they're all two and a half hertz. Uh, so if you got a two and a half hertz, man, you gotta, you're in good company. And here's my, <laughs> here's my two and a half hertz. Okay, let's see. What are you guys talking about? Your Vermac watches are all manual wind. Okay. Um, what is it? What is it? Sydney Green Street. Thank you very much. Um, which will, I, I better get to work on my, my diet <laughs> if I remind you of Sydney Green Street. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> all right. Okay, Foreman Colossus. <laughs> I think, I love the way that oh, better and better. All right, uh, well, let's see what else you got for the two and a half hertz uh, rental car. Oh man, Foreman, 
Wait, Foreman, didn't you just say you have the um, you had that the Endeavor? I thought you did anyway. That's a neat one. That's a great hand wound. Hey, Wim, what you got there? I, I don't have any manual wind pieces. Thinking about getting a Speedy or an Oris uh, Pro Pilot. Good choices. You know, uh, I think I may have talked about this last time. In fact, uh, on yesterday's um, uh, video, talked about the... Uh, uh, I really like the moon watch with the manual wind. And then they got this thing that they call the, um, ah, what do they call it? The uh, Sapphire Sandwich. Really a great idea. I mean, like it's going all the way back. Someone said uh, the other day, we were talking about uh, sports watches and why sports watches uh, generally were not manual. And, it, and it, I forgot what it was, but it made sense at the time. I recently acquired a manual wine dear 1950 Universal Geneve. Ooh, that sounds interesting. And a manual 68 uh, Speedmaster. Yes, those are those are both nice watches. My uh, uh, Patek Philippe is um, 1968 also. Uh, manual wine, it feels like I'm turning it in jewels. Beautiful watch to wind. Unfortunately, got a solid case back most of them most of them back then did have the uh the solid case back caliber uh 1304 from fp jorn is nice boy is that the uh is yeah is that the one with the two barrels on it uh dgb and the one that they have for the blue and the souverains is i think it sounds right hey travis how you doing man um Nolan, hi. Uh, got a, a stow a, a flagger uh, 90th with uh, Unitas. All right, those are that's a nice one. Um, Jeffrey K. Looking at a Breguet La Tradition. Me too. <laughs> I love those watches. Those Breguet. I, when I get a Breguet, the Breguet that I want to get is, is someone's going to say, "Did Abraham Breguet make that?" <laughs> I really like those. Those are the coolest watches. And uh, the line they have are called the uh, Tradition. I'm surprised the Heritage line and the Classic line from uh, Breguet aren't that way, but the Tradition is. Okay, and that's something. The Sapphire Sandwich should be more popular. <laughs> yes. What should we do? I isn't that the one they call the gray side of the moon? I'm not positive. I, I, I really don't know, oh, you know the sports watches that well. Uh, the Rolexes, the Omegas. I uh, even the Zenis, I you know I know some some of them, but the ones I like are, uh, you know, and I, and I think we can see more watchmaking in them are the ones that are manual that you can see the back on. Um, this one, boy, I tell you, I, I've been tearing up uh, bands like mad uh, here. This guy, I think I've showed you this about a million times. I don't know if you can see it or not, uh, but you can you can see the every aspect of the movement including that big fat diamond that they put in the um on on top of the balance i mean you know this is this is fun stuff to have uh it's odd to see through case back has no extra added value appeal to me rich buddy that's because you've been you've been buying rolexes <laughs> for too long <laughs> you you, you got to start looking in the back uh, Rolexes have really nice movements to, to look at. One of my very favorite, if, or at least one of my very favorite, is that gorgeous movement that they have in the back of the prints. Man, I tell you, they got the, they have the window and they have they do such a beautiful job on that. I, I don't know why they cover up everything else. That's eh. anyway. Um, display back only works if the movement is worthy of attention, either intricate design or craftsmanship. Ah, just cool in another way. Uh, you know, that's like this is this is called cool in another way. Um, I really like the uh, Thomas Ninkris, uh and Dub Dubeth and Son. Good choices, both of them. Uh, really good choices. What do you think about the vintage America-made Hamilton? Yes, that's a great idea. You know, that's something that. Um, you know the guys. Uh, you know, with the, those of us who are are uh, doing things with pretentious watchmakers, 
uh, some of them, some of the guys I think have, have been looking into that. Uh, to, the, the problem sometimes in getting one of those old Hamilton is uh, you have to you have to get an old Hamilton case, and I, I like to you know put things together in different parts. I've got a Armour Long Beach chronograph with the Seagull movement, and that does deserve a display back. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. There are a lot of Seagull uh, movements that are very cool. Uh, they have, um, you know, people figure, well, they're a cheap movement. Well, they're not cheap. They're inexpensive. And, you know, there are two ways to look at it. We've been overpaid for really expensive movements. Um, and, like, you know, you take your standard grind them out at the factory, uh, uh, let's say a B01 from Breitling. Now, Breitling, uh, B01, I, you know, my hat's off. I got a hat. My hat's off to them for doing the B01. But, um, you know, most of this stuff they do, they give it some phony baloney caliber name and uh, and act like it's uh, manufactured by Breitling, which sort of drives me nuts. Okay, the outlaw Jacques. Hey, yes. Oh, I don't have it with me. Um, yeah, the outlaw Jacques whale. Right. Yeah, my uh, my wife has told me that that looks good on her. And I put a red strap on it with that gold. Whew, looks great. I ordered a, I, uh, I ordered another one, a really cool one that was a green, bright gator strap for that. Mm -mm, that's going to look good. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, the Cellini would be a contender for the best case back considering three versions made in the details. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Well, the one I like the best, uh, Rich Buddy, um, is the one with where you have the circular, um, I don't know what you call it. It's something like Gilo Shea. Something like Gilo Shea. Circular, and then the, it sort of goes to the back of circular, too. Very cool looking watch. This is why, you know, now, to me, that's watchmaking. I mean, it's watchmaking you can look at and, you know, do something about. Um, one of the other things I was thinking about, and, and I'd like to get your uh, views on this. Um, the, you take something like this, okay, here's a, um, you know, this is sort of a basic, uh, time only watch. You got hours, minutes, and seconds, and, um, it, it doesn't come with a great big <laughs> stick amount, um, stem. I, I just haven't trimmed it enough yet. But the thing of it is, is that how many different parts are in a really good watch and and one like this? I, I was thinking of the, uh, I, I don't know if any of you have seen the uh, Lang & Hein uh, Georg. And it's a little rectangular watch and you can, you can see everything. And they have these little bitty uh, bridges that hold the gears in place and they go marching right down the side. You look inside that thing and you can see basically the entire um gear train uh, train and you can see escapement you can see the balance you can see everything there but the interesting thing about that is that i can look in here once i take it apart and and and, and if it didn't have all those uh, um uh, the, the big uh, hunks of metal around all of the movement the um uh the bridges and the uh oh, what are they, uh, the base uh the plates it didn't have the big plates and the and the bridges, how many different things am I going to find here versus in here? You know, and the thing of it is, is that there aren't a whole lot. And and so you know, the the whole thing about cheap movements, I think, is to simply you know you can say, oh maybe I'll I'll pop this um, plate off and take a look underneath. That's okay because you can you can learn about it now. I popped enough plates and bridges and broken enough to know, so I'm an expert at it. Um, so that's something else too that I think it's interesting is that looking at that and say, oh, they put this in here. This is why this new uh, Moritz Grossmann is so interesting. Not only uh, have they put a rotor in, they, they don't have a rotor, they have a hammer, so you can still see the whole movement. But the other part of it is, is you can see how the hammer is actually doing the winding. Uh, here on on this and on this, you got these 
you know, we know how it's wound. You got these winding gears and you have a stem that you twist or the crown, you turn the crown on it. But, you know, that's that's sort of a fun thing to do too. Uh, boy, I, a fistful, ooh, I don't know what that is, uh, Clyde. Uh, can you recommend a sub 100 hand crank watch that is not China made? Yes, I can. Uh, one I like very much, it's called the Tissot, um, oh, what's that called? I think it's the Tissot Grand Seconde or something like that. But it's anyway, it's, it's a neat watch and it's very clean. Uh, sub 1000, I think the original price was 995 or just the other day I was looking at them on a Joma shop, they're 650. And uh, I don't know if you could find them, but they're called the Tissot something, what is it? Something second, Seconde. That, that, that was the same watch. The interesting story about that watch was that they, oh, I know what it's called. It's called the uh, Tissot Heritage, that's it. Now, originally it was called the Tissot Heritage Antimagnetic, and same watch, and yet it wasn't antimagnetic. <laughs> so we thought, whoops, we better take the. I mean, that was they had one of the first antimagnetic watches, and so they're going to put out the heritage, but they didn't make it antimagnetic, so they had to change the name. Oh, that was really funny. Hi, official mainspring. How you doing, man? Um, so heritage. Hey, Will. Will Clevet, that's exactly what it's called. The So Heritage Petite Seconde. You guys know all of this stuff. I'm I'm glad. Okay, truth, fears, guilty, lost it. Yeah, well, how old were you when you lost it? <laughs> all right, uh, the So Heritage. Yes, yes, yes. You guys are all right. You got that one. Anyway, I think that's a, a great one for, uh, and then it's got the Unitas uh, 6498 in it. Uh, so that's another cool thing about it. Okay, uh, let's see what else you got on. Hey, Bill, how you doing, man? Uh, I some old, El I have some old Elgin pocket watches made in the uh, late 1890s. Interesting to look at the movements in the dial are made of porcelain. Oh, whoa, those are gorgeous. I love those old porcelain uh, dials on watches. Those are fantastic. Um, Return policy. Where is Crappy? He's not here today. Um, okay, let's see. Been doing well. Let me see. What, 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 what. There you go. That's good to see. Um, Viso date. No, uh, Forbin, it's not the Viso date because uh, this one is time only. Um, but, you know, it, it, the reason that's, I guess, somewhat important is that the the case almost glove like fits the um the movement and so you get this sort of a thin thing around here and so you can see all of the movement on that uh, to sew okay let's see um yeah the day oh well, rich buddy black powder what did you do shoot the watch with it black powder pistol bang uh visit date doesn't have a sub second no um you know something this is sort of something i found out is that where the sub seconds go i've seen um some um what are they called moon phases they put in moon phases where the sub seconds go and uh, i guess they take the seconds and gear it down or in some way so that the moon's not going around like that and they sort of gear in the uh, uh, the moon phase. It's sort of an interesting thing. Um, hey, Hans, how you doing? You're in Havana? Oh, wait, no, you're talking to our man in Havana. Where is he? Uh, I don't see our man in Havana. Is our man in Havana here? I don't know how many of you ever, ever saw that film, Our Man in Havana, but one of my favorite scenes in it is that they're playing chess with these little uh, rum bottles, <laughs> you know, the little the kind that they give you on airplanes. <laughs> Take a drink of that. Okay, Hans, what is it? Oh, me, I am our man in Havana. 
Well, I did know about the chess game. All right. Um, let's see. Hey, Havana's fine. Yeah, I that's uh, I would love to visit Havana. Okie doke. Um, <laughs> I thank you very much. Okay. Um, yeah, this is, you know, listen, guys, Labor Day is Monday. What else was I to wear? I couldn't, you know, I have, I've only had this on once for another video we had. It's been so blasted hot. It's been, I, and then I even had to leave this open so I could breathe. All right, uh, Barrington Griffin in Canada used to make, uh, maybe they still do, watches with old refurbished uh, Bolova 17H movement. You know, um, and that's something that's, you know, that's something that's really an interesting resource for a lot of old movements and stuff, and a lot of interesting movements. I've been sort of looking at that. The, uh, you know, the vintage guys uh, probably have a better handle on that than I do, but it's sort of interesting. Um, Hemingway, well, thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, no, no, not KFC. I'm sorry, BS. Anything but that. Rasher, how you doing, man? Wearing a nice manual uh, Piaget. Oh, yeah, you know, that 430 uh, movement on the Piaget is a very nice one. Uh, hi, Hans, man, from Del Monte. <laughs> Okay, uh, all right. Uh, oh, the old man in the sea, yeah. Well, I, I got half that right. Okay, let's see. Okay, what's Clive up to? You know, Clive, I miss all of your videos. I mean, your live stream so you can talk and stuff. I always get it in the stupid thing. You have it when I'm at dinner at some time. You know, you guys have to get your clocks fixed in Oklahoma. That's all there is to it. Okay, hi, Will Clever. Let's see, what do you think of the Carl F. Buchner peripheral? Most of the movement is visible since the rotors are on the side. I'm not sure about that. Um, I, I, I yes, I know it. It has a. I'm, I'm wondering about the. Um, uh, what I'm wondering about is is the does the peripheral cover up sort of the edges of the movement or not? Uh, and that was, I, I guess that's why I like the hammer. Um, the the micro rotor takes up a little hunk of room, of almost a quarter of the uh, the watch sometimes, and so you miss a lot of stuff that way. You know, it's it's easier to uh, simply you know work with a uh, with a manual. Okay, I have a bull of a 1940 uh, Minuteman from my favorite uncle. Wish he had more expensive taste. <laughs> what a nice guy. <laughs> he's my favorite uncle, but he's, he's a cheapskate. <laughs> I don't, uh, let me see. I don't have a favorite uncle. <laughs> okay, the Watch Lounge. What's up, man? Um, okay. I, which what, Watch Lounge? Let me see. What name did you go by? <laughs> it was, I... Oh, let's see. Okay, we're in an Omega Speed Bank of Dark Side of the Moon. Same as Gray Side, only darker. <laughs> yeah, 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 the dark side usually darker than the gray side. Is, is that one of those, uh, the uh, sapphire sandwiches, uh, Bill? Uh, any new watch purchases? Hans is asking. Uh, yeah, I got. I have a new watch purchase. Oh, in fact, I have two. Um, one is this one. This is my, uh, I finally got my regulator and this cost me a grand total of 200 bucks. And I just love it. It's, it's one of those watches. I, I got it from this guy in Hong Kong. Uh, God knows how long we're going to be able to get it again. He, he said, well, I'm late. We had a riot today. <laughs> oh boy. This is, this is, we had, I, when, when my, uh, one of my FP George was in Miami, for servicing, I got this email. Oh, we're having a hurricane. We're going to be delayed. And they were. It took them an extra week to get to my watch. The only good thing about it was that the main part of the hurricane missed where uh, FP Jordan has a service center. Okay. Uh, Chris with a Zenith. Let me see what's going on. Watch that. I was wearing a Scurfa. 
MacGyver four o'clock. Uh, at the moment, actually, a lot of watch for the money. Uh, is that an Eberhardt that you have, a uh, watch lounge? Uh, uh, am I missing it? Okay, Travis, what do you got? Thanks for introducing to Tour B. Yes, I like Tour Bs. You know, I tell you, so I think uh, Clyde and I sort of introduced each other to the Tour B. We had a, we did a, I, we did a discussion on that one day. It was a lot of fun. Seriously, folks, who grew up during the Depression era did not spend a lot for a watch. Uh, they got expensive gold watch on retirement. Yeah, you know, that should, the, the gold watches back then aren't like the gold watches are now. Um, before watches, it used to be a, a time way back when, back in the 70s, uh, and I remember that the gold was selling for $30 an ounce, and now it's like $1,500 an ounce. So that's one of the reasons that gold is not used as much. By the way, too, I'm, I'm, I'm beginning to come to believe that the popularity of, this, of the sapphire back on, on gold watches especially is that a little you know, circle or a big circle of, of man-made sapphire is a lot less expensive than the same hunk of putting a big hunk of gold back there. So... Uh, that might be a good reason for it. Hey, Natto, how you doing, man? Uh, let's see, back in the day, gold was goldier. <laughs> All right, what else? Let's see, 50 to 1,550 years, very poor investment return. Oh, man, Rich Buddy, you, you Rolex guys all think alike. <laughs> oh, Okay, official mainspring. I don't like uh, precious metals. Dan Seasley. That's true, but I I like it. I like gold. There's a guy, his name John, I think, or something like that, uh, who loves gold. I, I call him Goldfinger. He loves. He's got this. He's got this gold, uh, yellow gold. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, FP Jorn, uh, Chronomet Surveyn, and then he's got a gold bracelet. Jeez, that's his. <laughs> like whoa, uh, this is not something I'd wear where even one mugger is within 200 miles. This it is a neat looking watch. So hey, let's see now. That's called Jura Bugos. I got uh, Prem Caliber 66 from after my grandpa Czech made handmade hand wine. You guys might not be familiar with watches from a socialist time. Hmm. Uh, that is interesting, uh, and it's called a prim. Well, I, t I tell you, a lot of guys, uh, especially those who you know play around with making watches, uh, they get a lot of the uh, the old um, the old Soviet era watches. That uh, I, I got one of their alarm watches, uh, Poljot, I think is the name of the company. Okay, let's see. Palladium is now the priciest precious metal. I wonder if we see them in watches. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Rich Buddy, I, I've seen them in a number of watches, and I always wondered about it, uh, whether uh, is palladium as good as platinum or, or what is it? Uh, I've noticed, in fact, the price of gold is higher than the price of platinum, which is really unusual these days. In Soviet Russia, watches <laughs> wind you. Yeah, they also watch you, I think. Uh, we, we, we now have it. The Instead of the, the state, we have the corporations keeping an eye on us. Okay, uh, BS No Gold uh, in watches. Hi, Robin C. How you doing, man? Um, okay, well, uh, dented packets, rooted rotors. <laughs> All right. Uh, platinum surpassed gold today. Oh, did it? Okay, well, there goes my... I, I have one platinum watch, uh, and it's one of my favorite, and it's the Chronomet Surveying. Neat, neat watch. It's very simple. Uh, time only with a power reserve indicator. Small seconds at about 7.30. Just an easy watch to wear. Um... Palladium, yeah. Okay. Are you off for an evening meal with friends tonight? 
Um, no, I just, I, like I said, this, I just, I got dressed up for this so we could have a discussion. I mean, like I said, you have to put up with, <laughs> I, I'm neither French nor Basque and yet I have a break. Speaking of which, there's this really cool uh, Netscape uh, movie called Little Switzerland uh, that I saw the other day. It's a lot of fun, really funny. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Key to each his... Yes, to each his own. Right. Everybody likes what they like. Um, I like, you know, I can't tell the difference between white gold, steel, and uh, platinum. And I have one, I have, you know, several uh, steel watches. Here's my latest steel acquisition. And, uh, you know, when I, when I look at the, I, I have, let's see, a great big white gold watch in the, uh, uh, the Henry uh, double hairspring. Can't tell the difference between it and the, uh, and the platinum in the uh, FP Jorn. Okay, well, listen, um, it looks like my time is up. <laughs> and so anyhow, tomorrow's review is going to be uh, on a very different kind of watch, okay? Um, so I just wanted to let you know. Bill, I, th I don't think they, they do that anymore with white gold. Uh, that was something that bothered me too, was a uh, rhodium, but I, I think they do something else. Um, Yes, with Lauren Bacall on my arm, that I wouldn't mind at all. <laughs> anyway, guys, look, I got to run. Thank you all for coming. Hope to see you tomorrow. Oh, by the way, too, this is the 11th hour, the very end. After today, uh, no more uh, Grand Prix picks are going to be allowed. I uh, got to turn it off because in September, sometime that uh, they never tell you exactly, they're going to have the pre-select and we'll be giving out our first prizes. So if you haven't done it yet, uh, get your entries in and maybe you'll win a free watch. Take care. Hope to see you tomorrow.